In my last video on this channel, I talked about null binds and how to enable them for free without a wooting or razor keyboard. One of the things that people have been talking about in regards to these binds in the last few weeks is whether or not they're even good to begin with. Since it's pretty hard to look at a demo and see if somebody's using binds unless they're blatantly doing the ADAD spam thing that you can do with null binds, we have to use some kind of demo analytics tool that hasn't really been created yet until now. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to do this yourself if you wanna prove it to yourself or try it on your own games and see that it works for you. So you don't have to trust me when I tell you that this is accurate data, but it's accurate data. The idea for me doing this analysis, which is what you're gonna see later in the video, came from a guy named Person328 on Reddit. He did this analysis and I reached out to see how he did it. He gave me this tool on GitHub that he used, but I found it kind of hard to use and it really wasn't easy to go through many, many demos and see it in a full event who is actually using these binds and when they're using them. So I hit up someone I know named Zero K. He's one of the main KZ mod developers. If you're deep involved in the KZ or CS modding community in general, you probably know this guy's name. He pops up a lot, but he was so incredibly helpful making the script for me. So I just want to give a huge thanks to Zero K. And so again, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I created this file and what it actually means, what all these numbers mean. But what I was able to do was generate a bunch of graphs based on this data. And so I'm just going to go through each team one by one and explain these graphs as you see them. So this first graph kind of puts everything into perspective very well. As you can see on the y-axis, we have the number of ticks spent in AD overlap. So if you have null binds enabled, as I explained in my previous video, if they're always on, you will always have zero overlap. It's not possible to press A and D at the same time. And so this is the purest form of null implementation where it's just on all the time. There are some KZ players who will turn it on and turn it off based on if they need to hit a jump in a certain way or not. But in competitive right now, it's not the meta to turn them on and off mid game so people just keep them off so the y-axis of this graph shows the number of ticks spent in ad overlap the bottom right shows obviously the players on each team and then the x-axis that goes across is the match in the tournament so on the far left is like the first match that they played and the far right is the last match that they played and I'm not gonna spend this much time on each graph. I'm gonna stop on some of the interesting ones but most of them kind of look the same the most important thing about this graph is that you can see Wrinkle and Maxter have all of this human error associated with their counter strafes. You can see that overlap exists in a normal pro player. And so even in these best case scenarios for these players, they're getting somewhere around 400. It kind of matched up with 400, 500. All this data will be public. I'll put it in a Google Doc. But what's not normal is that Isaac, Rez, and Alex are all flat zero. The odds that you're gonna get flat zero, no overlap are statistically significant to where we can decide that these people are using null binds. Okay, I haven't done the math, you got me, but just remember that these are very distinct things. A professional player's normal movement does not look like the zeros that we see here. All right, next up is G2. G2 in this event is interesting because Hunter actually was using null binds in IEM Dallas. I didn't graph it here, but you can go and do it yourself and look at the matches for yourself. Hunter and Nexa are both using null binds in IEM Dallas, but Nico Manessi and Hooksy and Stewie weren't. But in this event, Nico and Manessi used them the entire time. Moving on to Vitality, it's actually pretty interesting because you would think that a player like Zaiwu, who's touted by some to be the best player in the world, would be using some of these more modern methods and uh, at least trying them out a little bit. Maybe he tried them in practice, I don't know. But you can see that none of these players are using null binds. And as we go through this, you'll see some people that are super low, but they're not exactly zero. What I think is happening here is that they have wooting keyboards and they have the natural effect enabled, which means that if they bottom out both keys at the same time, it'll hold down A and D. But that really doesn't happen that much unless you're purposefully trying to do it or it's just an accident. So that's why you see people below 100. The other thing is that this script is not great at recognizing sub tick movement. It just looks at the full tick. And so it can kind of get a little wonky when it senses that somebody, you know, maybe has a little bit of overlap because it's registered by sub tick, the ticks overlapping. But in all honesty, it still is not normal to have double digit ticks in one game where there's hundreds of thousands of ticks in the game entirely for your movement. So we can say that Zaiwu isn't using these binds. Okay, Astralis, Bros, Down, and Device are all using it, and Yabby and Stare aren't. You can clearly see the difference here. Even though they're close to 300, I think that this just means that Yabby and Stare have really, really insane movement. I think if you're below 1,000 in your entire match, then your movement is actually really, really good. But we're gonna see some later examples where people's movement is really not up to snuff and it kind of makes sense for some of these players. Okay, this one is probably the funniest one. So we can see JDC is obviously using null binds, but Krimbo and Searson and Tabson all have pretty good movement. Uh, it doesn't look like they're using null binds because they're all above 300, 400, 500, they're in that range. But it's funny if you look at Regon, 
he had them enabled for two matches and then disabled them for another best of three, re-enabled them, and then disabled them again. You can see here, it's not normal for him to go 0-0 zero, zero, all the way up to 1,700, 1,800, and then all the way back down to zero here, and then finishing off, he re-enabled them in the same best of three. So I don't know what Regan was doing this tournament. Okay, here's FaZe Clan, and interestingly enough, Rops, who's touted as kind of like a KZ god, especially he plays a lot of 1.6 KZ, he has the worst strafes out of anybody which is kind of weird it must mean that he has some really weird bad habits or he holds down a and d in really weird ways but what we can say is that he's not using null binds because he has an absolute massive amount of ticks compared to everybody else you know those other graphs are maxing out at a thousand fifteen hundred maybe but he's in the four thousands range which is really interesting but obviously rain and frozen are both using null binds in this example Okay, Falcons, it's just like some of the other teams. Magic, Snappy, and Madden are all using it while some Pius and Dupree are not. It seems like some Pius is really insane movement and he might be using the Wooting natural mode. I'm not too sure. I think some Pius might just have really good movement though because you can see this human error changing between matches. But again, Magic, Snappy, and Madden, zero human error. It's all done by the script. Okay, here we have Navi. JL has gone on Twitter in interviews to say that he is using Nullbind so we can confirm that he has it and he looks like he put Bit on and really I can't tell what's up with Bit being so low so close to zero but like I said earlier I believe it's because of wooting settings maybe there's something on a Razer keyboard I don't have a Razer keyboard so I'm not able to test those features but this does not look human and then I don't really know what to say about Emma because in some matches he's peaking up near 200 but again, look at the professionals behind him. Alexi being wonderful. Wonderful is the most insane upcoming talents, uh, if not one of the best, not even upcoming players anymore. And his movement is in, you know, it's spiking to the 900s and whatnot. And this guy has insane movement, right? So I'm willing to bet that Emma has some implementation of null binds. Okay, here's Liquid. And an interesting anecdote about Liquid, I believe that Yekandar was the first tier one pro player to be using nulls in CS2. And I can prove this by going back to April 17th, when he played a match against Stray Kids in the ESWC qualifier, him and Skulls, when Skulls was still on Liquid, both had zero overlap. And this was well before Null Binds were being talked about, right? Null Binds were dropped by Razor in June. So they were using it in April. And I was sent a screenshot that says that Razor and Liquid have had one of the longest standing partnerships in esports almost six years now. So I wouldn't doubt that Razor was trying this out with Yekandar and Skulls to see if it worked or not. And he gave them feedback. But so what we can see here is that Yekandar and JKS both used it for the entire event. It seems like ultimate. I don't know if he was using it here because these aren't zero, but he definitely switches to zero in these last two matches here. And JKS seems to be using it too. But interestingly, we can see Nafly isn't using it at all. I don't know why everybody else is using it and he chooses not to, but it's a personal choice for him. Okay, complexity, it's more of the same. Floppy and Grim are both using it. I believe Elise is using it because these numbers are extremely low in the double digits. I think JT might just have insane movement and Halzerk is here in the back and he's clearly not using the binds. Okay, Virtus Pro didn't play very many matches, but we can see here that Norbert has the binds enabled and his teammates probably don't. Okay, this is kind of a funny graph too because we can see here that Saw is definitely using it. Shush is most definitely using it besides maybe the first game, maybe he was, I don't know. Kiksan isn't using it and Nerts and Tessas both turned it on mid-tournament for the last match, which is very interesting. Maybe they saw how OP it was on their keyboards, I don't know. Okay, now we have Gamer Legion. It seems like Gamer Legion, the only player who's using it is ZTR. And again, they didn't play that many matches, but you can see the data here. ZTR is clearly well below them. Okay, here we have OG. And I believe Thomas is the only player using it. And here, look at Fiku. This is a professional player, I remind you. And he's peaking above 4,000. This graph goes, goes up, uh, you know, beyond the graph. I didn't want to make it too big just to account for Fiku, right? But you can see that somebody on this team is clearly using null binds. Spirit is an interesting one because Donk is touted by a lot of normies in the YouTube uh, Twitter space saying that he's the best movement player, how to, how to move like Donk. But Donk, interestingly, doesn't use these binds. Donk seems like a player where if he used them, it'd actually probably hinder him a lot because he's so dependent on his, you know, muscle memory and his mechanics. And I think messing with that muscle memory might be a problem. But I think the funniest part about this graph is look at Chopper. He's just completely off. He's above 5,000. If there's one player from this graph who has the worst movement of anybody in the game, I guess it's Chopper, which is kind of wild to say. Okay, so I don't know how Cloud9's graph got deleted. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I don't know what the fuck I was doing, but um, here it is. All of them got deleted somehow, so luckily I, I screenshotted all of them before they got deleted in my XL. I don't know what the fuck happened. But we can see here that Axile and Heavy God are both using Nullbinds, and then Icy enters and Boomich aren't. 
Uh, and you can see boom, it just up towards the three Ks and whatnot. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to do this for yourself, for your own games or validate my data, whatever you wanna do with it. It's super easy, zero K made this so easy and I can't thank him enough for making my life way easier versus me having to do this all individually. So big thanks to him. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get Go, which is a programming language that he coded this in. And uh, it's just as simple as downloading and installing it. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. Okay, and so what I did is I put it in a file here. I call it zero Go in this example. Again, this is gonna be a little bit more advanced, so um, if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to. And so these files won't exist, but these five files will. So these files are just for my sanity. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to the bar right up here, and once you're in your, the folder that you've installed it in, you're just gonna type CMD and hit enter. And this will open up a command prompt in the directory that we picked. Uh, if you don't do this, you're just gonna to have to change directory to the directory that the scripts are all in. So we're on Zero's GitHub here. And it's very easy to just copy paste this. So you can type it in if you want, but I'm just gonna copy paste it here. So go run print, go overlap, and then dash demo. And so if you wanna do a single demo, let me pull one up here. If you wanna just do a single demo like this, you're just gonna drag it into the file directory here that you have all the scripts in. And I'll just delete that here. And then what is it called? Furia versus liquid. So Furia, I'll just hit tab. And I'll hit enter. So this will run one demo like this. And so what it'll do is it'll output to a CSV file. And so if you can't read this because you don't have Excel, you can just open it on Google Docs, I believe, but it's just a CSV file, which is just like a small table. And we're already done here. You can see it, I'll open it. And where's my Excel? There it is. So here's the raw data. So Steam ID, name of each player, and then we can see overlap instances. And so this is the number of times that an overlap occurred. And then overlap ticks is what I was worried about in this video. And so this is the number of ticks that you'll see somebody have overlap for. You can see Kadian has 3000 ticks of overlap, which is kind of wild. Now, this is an old demo, but it doesn't matter. It'll work for any CS2 demo from what I understand. And so this is tick over instance. So this is like how bad your strafes are, I guess. Uh, if you think about it in that way, so I guess Kadian has the worst strafes. But what we can see here is that the people with zero overlap are the ones who are using null binds, right? He included WS overlap just like for the memes because you know some people might have it enabled on their keyboards, but uh, this isn't really anything to worry about here. And then all this other stuff is just like more data for you from the demo. If you're a developer and you wanna implement on his idea, all of this stuff came from this demo parser here, which let me pull up. And so this is the demo parser that the guy on Reddit that I got the idea from used. and so. The Go script is a derivation of this. But as you can see, there's all these things in a demo that you can read. Um, I'm not, you can read the GitHub for yourself. So the real useful part of this script is being able to mass process demos. And so let me just delete these CSV files here for this example. Okay, so we've got all these demos, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in a path right here, which is just liquid in this folder. Uh, you can put it anywhere, I believe, but this is just the easiest for my workflow. And so what we're gonna do is select the file path up here, just copy. And then I'll go back into our script. And instead of doing dash demo, zero coded an argument into here to, to do multiple demos at once. So you just do dash dir equals, and then quotation marks, and then the file path, and then you just hit enter. And then we can watch the CSV files be generated in real time here. And so this is super helpful. And uh, it really made my life super easy because I could organize all the demos into by day and then see them all happen back to back to back. I didn't have to do them all manually. There's a little bit of manual effort involved, but uh, if you're good at Excel, it's not really that big of a problem. Okay, so now that all the CSV files are generated, uh, we can see them all on their own here. So what I did for my data analytics was I opened another command prompt here in this file directory, so liquid. And then you can just do this simple command right here, copy and then star CSV. So this will select all the CSV files. And then the website that I got this command off of makes it merge CSV files.cfp. We'll just call it like liquid full CSV. And then this should be almost instant. And then now we have this CSV file, which will contain all of them combined here. And so this is what I was able to do my data analytics with. So this will probably be useful for you if you're gonna do a lot of demos. And yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe because this took a long time for me to figure out how to do. Uh, it took me a long time to make all the graphs and everything for you guys to put it in a digestible package. So I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.